do it. Hey guys, this is Versatile from VST Power Now, hosted on Project Phoenix Media. So this is a really nice PS2 game tutorial, and it's going to be more of a troubleshooting video for gamers who have a modded PS2, fat or slim, and I'm going to help you troubleshoot your networking issues. So you could be doing the crossover cable method, or you could be doing the router method. If you're not familiar with either of those methods, see the more info section. I have a link to those two respective videos, but I know a lot of gamers for whatever reason, they can't get their games to show up properly. And I'm gonna go through some of the troubleshooting steps that I have done myself personally to make this work. And I'm gonna help you make yours work as well. So one of the first things we wanna do is let's check the basic, very basic settings. So I'm using Windows 7, 64 bit. I'm sure that the procedure will be similar using Windows 8 or even Windows 10 now. So let's get started. So let's go into your control panel and Inside a control panel, there should be a section called, or something similar to network and sharing center. So let's go into there. And let's go to change advanced sharing settings. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you my settings for both my home or work profile, as well as the public profile. So let's get started. So here we have turn on network discovery, turn on file and printer sharing. We got turn on sharing so anyone with network access can read and write files in public folders. Um, leave that default, leave this as well, use 128 bit encryption. Turn off password protected sharing, allow Windows to manage home group connections. Okay, so that's that. Now let's go to the public section. Turn on, turn on, turn on, keep on going. Use 128 and then turn off password protected sharing. And then that's it. So click on save changes. If you haven't saved it already and you're good to go. Next thing we want to do is let me show you my folder, uh, my folder structure, excuse me. So I'm gonna go to my computer here. I'm gonna go to my temp folder. And I have a folder called PS2 SMB, okay? And let me just go inside the folder structure, show you what this looks like. So um, CFG, I don't really need this anymore, so I'm gonna delete that. But that was, if you were using USB Extreme, you would have ripped your game files into like this main directory. So imagine you had the ul.cfg and all the other game files. But for simpler purposes, it's just easier to do the CD and the DVD method. So in my example, I have created a DVD folder. I have ripped one game here and <clears throat> I was just messing around with this earlier, but the game is called area51.iso. So when you rip your game using like a DVD decryptor or image bird, it's gonna give you an ISO file, right? Take that ISO file and put it into the DVD folder, but you gotta rename it a very proper uh, and concise method. So just like in my other video tutorials, I'm gonna go over one more time here for um, brevity's sake, is if you were to mount this image, so I'm gonna mount it using virtual clone drive, and if I go into my CD here, or the disk here, I'm gonna find a file that says slus underscore 205.95. So we gotta make sure that this main character string is part of your ISO file name. So let's go back. Notice that I have the exact same thing here, slus underscore 205.95 dot. And then here you say the name of the game. So in my case, it's area 51, spaces are okay, dot ISO. And just in case, I'm in all capital letters. If for whatever reason you want to add cover art, you can just go to Google, download some cover art, make sure you go to the art folder, so create a new folder called Art Capitals, and then go ahead, rename it very similar method, SLUS underscore 205.95, for example, underscore COV.jpg. Notice that it's a little bit different. And I have a link to another video that goes into more detail about how to add cover art to OPL games. Okay. So that's just a very quick tutorial on how to rip your games and install them and rename them properly. And yes, you can share a game folder. You can share a folder that's on NTFS or FAT32 on your main computer's hard drive or laptop's hard drive. You can share a folder uh, like a USB external hard drive or you can share a folder on a flash drive as well. So to make things simple, just make a folder, call it PS2 SMB, okay, right click, go to properties, and this is where the magic happens. So this here is okay, read only, that's okay. I'm gonna have it read only. Now we go to um, sharing. Under sharing, click on, uh, let's do this instead. Let's do advanced sharing. Call share this folder, call it PS2 SMB, okay. Under permissions, we go here, everyone, do this. Allow for full control, change and read, click apply, and click okay. Click apply again, why not? Click OK, and you're good to go. Now, another step, just in case, guys, it doesn't hurt, go to share here, go to here, find guest, click on add, 
And then here, just say read and write, share, and you're good to go. That covers all your bases, okay? Click on apply. Okay, cool. And we're good. Now, here's a screenshot of my PS2. Um, I'm inside OPL, inside the network settings. So let me just go over the network configuration real quick here. So if you're doing the router method, it doesn't matter. Just put in some IP address here for your PS2. Just make sure that it matches your gateway, the first three octets. So for example, I have a router. The router is 192.168.0.1. So that's the IP address of the router that goes right here. If you're doing a uh, crossover cable method, for example, then you want to put the PC IP address here instead. And then some that mask is just like this by default. Have it as auto. IP address, that's the IP address of your PC, whether it's um, you know from the router assigned or, uh, or um, crossover cable assigned, static IP. Port, leave it alone. Now, this is where the magic happens. When you first install OPL by default, you're going to get a blank, like literally no characters here. So one of the downfalls that gamers find is they don't actually put some words here. So I highly encourage you to actually make a name. So let's call it PS2 SMB. Okay, make sure it says guest here, no password, and click on OK. So what happens is if you don't actually specify a name here, and when you try to run your games from Ethernet, you're not going to find any games in your list. So make sure it says PS2 SMB guest, click OK, and then go into your OPL, start your Ethernet, and then your list of games should show up, and you're ready to have a lot of good times. And that is pretty much today's video tutorial. So if you guys have any nitpicky questions, Leave a comment here on the YouTube page. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.